before we get started, I kindly ask you all to join me in a moment of silence. We pause to honor and remember the Nijis who have lost their lives and those who remain unaccounted for due to the devastating impacts of Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. Their memories remain in our hearts and our thoughts are with their families and communities during these incredibly difficult times. Let us now take a moment to reflect and stand in solidarity. Yokoki, thank you. Alito Chimachukma, this is Chief Steve coming at y'all with another one. Another episode of True Story. Now, before we get into it, make sure that you guys like this video. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell while you're at it so whenever I drop these bombs, you'll be the first one to grab them. Got a very interesting one for you guys today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alito, y'all. I appreciate you guys joining me today. And uh, I know it's been a pretty rough couple of weeks for our needies out there on the East Coast, the Southeast, to be exact. And uh, these storms, man, they kept coming back to back. Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. And um, yeah, they definitely did a lot of damage and affected a lot of our people's lives out here so um i appreciate you guys sticking with me and um joining me in that moment of solidarity for our needies out there that's going through it right now because um from the last i heard we have about three million people all together just in one state that's out of power uh, that's the last update that I got I don't know um, if there's any other update but if you're in the state of Florida in the state of Georgia North Carolina, South Carolina um, Virginia area wherever the storm had touched Tennessee, y'all let me know how y'all doing, if you have any um, source of power, I know uh, we had a particular Niji out there that's from California, from the same area that I'm, that I'm at right now, um, that had moved to, I believe, North Carolina, and so, you know, like I said, I mean, as Californians, we ain't used to that kind of weather. Yet at the same time, we resilient. And just as copper-colored indigenous aborigines, as the original people, we are resilient people. We know how to not only survive, we know how to thrive at the same time. So my best goes out to her and her people and everybody else that's that's feeling it out there but um there's a reason why these hurricanes have came back to back like this and uh man i didn't know about this until i started doing some digging because weather has never act like this and i don't want to just dismiss it and chalk it up 
as climate change like everybody else does actually like to get down to the bottom of things and really see what's going on and um because you you we've been hearing all kinds of theories about these hurricanes and these different tropical storms has been happening lately the weather out here is hot in california we have 100 degree weather out here in the middle of october so you know things is definitely going on things is definitely changing from what it once was but um not to get too political like I said, I don't like to chalk it up to just climate change. And if you want to say it's climate change, I would say more so it's a social climate change. And by social climate change, I mean that things are changing. Things aren't the way that they used to be on a societal level. For example, our people, the once reclassified, now declassified American Indians are starting to wake up to who they truly are. And this is a time of resonance, a time of realization, and a time of change. When we know the truth and we understand what's going on, what's been going on, and what's happened to us, it's like waking up from a, a long, deep slumber you're not going to move the way that you used to move. You're not going to act the way that you used to act. Not knowing the things that you know now. Which will bring upon what? Change. And as we see, as our people begin to experience and embrace this change. Nature. Our land, our soil. Our mother is moving right along with us. And now we see the impact that she's having on the world. Now we've heard of the different sundown towns that were in the midst of these hurricanes. There's so many videos on those that, you know, even the basic, you know, the basic knowledge, the basic knowledgeable person, not to disrespect anyone, they know what's going on with that. So you can check those videos out from those different creators. We know about the sun downtowns and we know about how they were affected. Yet we still have Niji's not only in those towns, but around the surrounding towns as well. You had different neighborhoods, different communities that were hit. And we still have a lot of our people that are unaccounted for. So in this time, I don't choose to revel in the devastation and impact of these severe storms. The ancestors are definitely moving. And those who did not get out the way definitely felt the wrath. No doubt. A lot of atonement was made within these last few weeks. Yet, there is still devastation. There is still loss. So, out of respect, for the universe and the balance of things, the Wakan, the Wakanda. I will not revel in this devastation, yet I will inform you that this happened for a reason, for many of reasons. And yet again, there has been one reason that has surfaced through my digging, through my research. And that is the defiling and the destruction of the Tokobaga Indians. That is a tribe that I did not know too much about. 
haven't really seen too much on them. But now they are beginning to make their presence known through nature, through our land, through our soil, through our atmosphere. And I find it only right and only respectful to give them their proper acknowledgement and to show you what has happened leading up to this devastation. So, with all that being said, we're going to pause for the cause and we're going to go ahead and get into some clips both from Niji and from others that show you exactly what's been going down. All right. Let's pause for the cause. Let's get right into those. Where you saw only on Spectrum Bay News 9, the state archaeologist confirms a human bone was uncovered at an Indian mound in St. Pete. And now the homeowner who was having that mound removed says he's reversing course and will be putting all the excavated material back. Spectrum Bay News 9's Josh Rojas is in St. Petersburg with more on this developing story. All work on this Indian mound stopped last month when human remains were discovered, and that remains the case today with no further excavation planned. The homeowner says he recognizes the importance of preserving and respecting the site. Karen Saren has an Indian mound in front of her home that extends down the street. This is a very big Indian mound that goes all the way from here all the way to the end of this block. So four houses of Indian Mound. Karen loves the Indian Mound. That's why she was upset when a new neighbor began removing his portion of it back in June to build a driveway. It exposed layers of shell left over from seafood the Native Americans ate. Well, this one. You can see that they broke into it and they would just take the conk out. The dig also exposed indigenous human remains. Through a spokesperson, the state archaeologist confirms human bone was uncovered and it's archaeological. That means 75 years or older. The state archaeologist says plans are being revised not to disturb the site further. In a statement, Karen's neighbor says he plans to rebuild the retaining wall and replace the original soil that was excavated. Well, Karen says she's happy the Indian mound's going to remain intact. I think that's where it belongs. I think it was left there for 2,000 years or 1,000 years or however long, and I think that's its resting place. Man, you know things is bad when, when even Karen, Karen is telling you, you done messed up. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's no laughing matter. This is blatant disrespect. The fact that their houses are on top of a mound. This neighborhood runs through sacred ground. It's disrespectful in itself. And we're going to get more into that as well. But yeah, and they consider it archaeological, archaeological because, um, the bones are at least over 75 years old. We know good and damn well that they are well over 75 years old. This ain't no little matter. We've been here for a very long time and it's been proven that there is only one type of people who built mounds. Even the so-called Native Americans admit that these mounds were here before they even migrated here. So whose ancestors do you think those foreigners have disturbed? It's the copper colored indigenous American Indian. The American Aborigine. Anyway, let's keep on. We got more to show you.
Have you heard of the theory about Hurricane Milton? Oh, humans. Apparently, somebody decided to dig up a native burial ground in Tampa. And to make it even worse, it was allegedly dug up for a driveway. And now people are regretting that and leaving offerings. But it's too late because Hurricane Milton is coming at full force and take a look at the shape of it. I was at work tracking Hurricane Milton this evening and uh, captured this on infrared satellite. This is creepy. Now look, I am very logical, okay? I understand pareidolia, I know what that is. We will often see shapes, faces in things like uh, clouds, burnt toast, hurricanes, right? I understand the phenomenon, but that doesn't make this any less creepy. So yeah, these foreigners know, they know what's happening. Even they have a feeling, a bad feeling, that they've done something wrong, that something has been wrong, that some transgression has transpired in order for these events to unfold the way that they're unfolding. The way that they have unfolded. And yeah, to me, that looks like a face. That looks like, I mean, look at that. When you look at it, really. Look at that bottom part. Those look like thick lips. Above those lips. You see that, that bottom part? And then you go up. I can't zoom in on the... Um, I can't zoom in on it, so y'all gotta bear with me. But if y'all y'all can see, those look like thick lips. And it looks like a, a wide nose. Full feature. And also, if you notice, and you can take a look at the hurricane diagram yourself, the trajectory of Hurricane Milton should be able to Google that. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll stop and I'll show y'all and, and see if I can find a better uh, a better image of both. But this came off of the Yucatan Peninsula. And if you know anything about the Yucatan Peninsula, you know that is ancient ground. That is where the ancestors of a lot of the Southeastern tribes the predecessors, the ancient ones, it's where they reside. That is also where the final resting ground, the paradise, it is believed that it's the souls of the indigenous ones go to that land. To that atmosphere, to that region. It's known as the Amenti, the land of the West, an Egyptian culture. But we're going to go ahead and try to pull up a better diagram and a trajectory. Let's pause for the cause and we're going to get into it. Hey y'all, if y'all still rocking with me, make sure that you guys hit that like button. Like this video. We need as many likes as we can on this video to get the eyes and ears to what's being told which is the true story a lot of people are not hearing this the way that they should a lot of people do not know about these events that transpired that was leading up to these devastating things so do your due diligence and share this video share it out and if you're new hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell all right let's keep going All right, y'all, real quick. So this is the Yucatan Peninsula area. Let me zoom in a little more if I can. Uh, that right there where it says 8 a.m. Monday. 
that right there is around the area that it has started. That is known as the head of the snake. That is known as the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, and then you see the, the Caribbean islands, the Caribs, you know, right here. These are Carib islands right here. And then this, all this blue area up here. See, that's Texas, Louisiana, Mexico. Started right off the head, it, it gained and gain momentum right off the head of that snake. That's the Yucatan Peninsula. That's where the Mayans come from. That's where the Mayans were, all right? And still are, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, it's the Amenti. The Egyptians call it the land of the West, where they believe all souls return after their life is over. They begin a new life in the land of the West. That is where the land of the ancestors, the ancient ones are. Right there, that Yucatan Peninsula, the head of that snake right there, where it says 8 a.m. Monday. All right, so it's, it's huge significance. That's why I said it's the doing of the ancestors. This, this is more than just political climate change or whatever they want to, you know, weather modification or anything like that. If anybody that's doing the modification, it is the modification that's being done by the ancestors. And anything and everything they do is natural. So you can't even call it that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that is. And um, we're going to go ahead. It's like I said, they they heard it. They heard what had happened. They felt it. And they sent what they sent. And unfortunately, those who had transgressed and those who are just bystanders have felt the devastation. Like I said, this is nothing to revel in. This is nothing to be proud of. This is just something that just is, all right? So don't take it the wrong way. I'm not by any means uh, praising the devastation and the loss of, of everything that's that's happened and what's gone down. But we're going to go ahead and see that, see if I can find that, uh, how that hurricane looked, get a better image of that. I'm gonna pause for the calls and see if I can get into it. Alrighty, y'all, this is the best that I can do. So as you can see on your left-hand side, that's what the hurricane would have looked like, just naturally from the space view, from so-called space, from bird's eye view. Um, this is what the hurricane would have looked like on your left hand side and on the right is the infrared You know what the weather, you know meteorologists and stuff see so that's what they saw You know and look you look, looking you even see in the eye The multiple different colors and the dimensions within the eye you look at that nose look at that right there Look how thick and wide that nose look look how full those lips look you know what I mean? You, If anybody was to have seen this skull in person, on a person, I mean, you can you can put the, use your common knowledge and it'll show you what this person would have looked like. This is an aboriginal skull. All right. This is it's the face of, a, of, a, of an indigenous original person. I mean, you can see it, and if you if you can't see it, you choose not to see it. This is definitely the doing of the ancient ones coming for atonement. So, once again, nothing to revel in. It's just something that is it needs to be brought to the attention of the once reclassified, now declassified American Indians. The ancestors are moving. So either you're going to move with them or you're going to get out the way. That goes for everybody. All right. Well, that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into more of these clips. In case y'all didn't know, someone messed with the Indian burial grounds. And if you're not from Florida and you don't know, long ago there are these Indian burial grounds and you're not supposed to touch them, okay? Um, and that's what's been said, that's been pre 
protecting Pinellas County, Tampa, so on and so forth. And that's why we haven't had a direct hit. Someone dug up her freaking body from the Indian burial grounds. And they just, from what I understand, from what I've seen, they put it back. You can't just do that. You messed with it. You mess with the spirits. And I typically don't believe in that stuff. But that's too coincidental. After Helene, you mess with it. And now we're getting a dark tit. Too coincidental for me. <laughs> Alright, once again, another one. Another one. Another other. Letting you know. This ain't it. I'm sure in the wake of Hurricane Milton creeping its way up to Tampa, a lot of people have been talking and hearing about the Indian burial grounds that are located in Tampa Bay. Well, the superstition or tale of this area is that locals believe that the spirits of the Tokobaga, which are the native peoples of what is now considered Tampa Bay, let's put some respect on their name, they're not just Indians. Well, locals believe that these spirits protect uh, Tampa Bay and the people that live in it. Many people think that this protection is why hurricanes that are going towards Tampa usually divert and go somewhere else. The first thing that comes to my brain whenever I hear this story, tale, superstition, whatever you want to call it, is dismissiveness. Dismissive to the history, to the bloodshed, to the genocide that took place on what is now considered Tampa Bay and what happened to the original people. Tampa Bay did not exist prior to Spanish colonization when the Spanish came to this area of the United States. Yes, there were people already living here centuries before the Spanish even touched foot on these lands. Actually, the town of Tocabaga was founded in 1200 CE, three centuries before the governor Pedro Menendez de Aviles and Father Juan Rogel arrived on their shore in 1567. And of course, as colonizers do, they try to enforce a conversion to Christianity by establishing missions and trying to put soldiers to control the people in that area. Well, the Tocowagans did not want to convert to uh, Christianity. They resisted, and because of that, the Spanish burned their town down. That's one thing. Let's move on to the second thing. The Spanish burned down the town of Tocowaga, and they removed all Tocowagans off that land. As non-native settlement of Tampa Bay picked up in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the mounds that Tocowagans and the native people in the area had constructed uh, some as high as 30 feet and reportedly visible for miles at sea were mined for road fill. They were made into roads. These settlers knew exactly what they were building on top of and they did not care one bit. Some of these mounds in the area have been destroyed by antiquarians, people looking for antiques and archaeologists. There was a mound that was completely excavated by archaeologists with the Smithsonian Institute in 1930 and those skeletons were left scattered about and some were carted back to Washington DC y'all they're not even in their home lands and some were used as fertilizer by local farmers the native peoples of this area of Tampa Bay and the surrounding area have been treated like crap why on earth would they protect that area why it's disrespectful to even think that they owe that area that kind of protection may I, and i don't want to be insensitive because i know a lot of people rely on this superstition and it gives them comfort but so yeah you even heard it from the uh prior video like i said even the others know that this ain't it and as this sister because she is a sister in a way you know she's she's one of our one of our tawny our tawny um latin latin niji i mean she she got that uh she has her her way of you know saying well, it's not just Indians, it's Native people, or right? it's the Tokobaga, Tocobaga Indians, and 
She is correct. Put some respect on their name. Put some respect on the Toho Baga. Alright? But yeah. These are more than just natives. Native. That was a term. That was a byword. Like I showed you in my prior videos in this and the videos that we're doing a series of describing what an aborigine is, how the law defines aborigine. These native is all bywords, part of the bywords. We are American Indians, yet neither here nor there. Bottom line is, put some respect on the Tokobaga, on the Tokobaga Indians, all right? These are the original people the original people of this land more than natives and you messed with the original people's sacred ground and you see it's more than just what was done recently this is something that has been done to not only the Tokobagan but to a lot all of our people out here have been removed in some kind of way, shape, or form. Not only removed, displaced. Displaced, reclassified, and even replaced by those who are not us. All right, so put some respect on it. The sister was right. The Togobagan deserve respect. And they showed it. And they showed that that area, they oh, they do not owe that area any protection. Even though we do have blood descendants, even though we do have Nijis out there in that area, as a whole, there's so much, so much devastation that's been done on this soil. Not only there, but all over Turtle Island. That it's up. It's, it's just up at this point. And the ancestors are moving. So you're either going to move with them. Or you're going to move out the way. Alright. Let's keep on going. And again y'all. If y'all have been rocking with me this long. Y'all still here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Comment Halito. Or comment. Never forget. Or comment. Remember the Tokobaga. It's right here on the screen. Drop something in the comments. Let me know that y'all still here. Y'all still rocking with me. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget. Don't wait till the end and forget. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Like the video. We're going to keep on going. Hey. So, I'm just sitting here thinking. Like... Did they know about the Indian burial ground? Because they know a lot of information on it now that it's been dug up. Like, so did they been know, you know, about it? Because if it did, you would think that they would make it sacred, not let anyone build a house or anything of that sort right there because of what it is. Um, maybe the people that knew about it, maybe they didn't believe. But how can you not believe? I mean, the last natural disaster that hit Tampa Bay was in 1921. So when the Native Americans built that sacred Indian burial ground to protect Tampa Bay, it apparently worked, right? I would think it did. Um, it didn't get disturbed until last month. Somebody decided that they wanted to make a driveway, okay? And when they was digging up concrete, they dug up bones and disturbed them bones, okay? Now, the owner, apparently, I'm going to say that the owner didn't know. The owner said that, you know, they would put it back. But you just can't put it back. I mean, you can't just put it back. It's already been disturbed. I'm pretty sure when they built the, the burial ground, they did chants, words, songs, you know, all kinds of little rituals or whatever to, to make it, you know, to make it strong. So you disturbed it and you're just going to throw it back down in the dirt and cover it up. <clears throat> so this is like, this is bad. 
So what do y'all think is going to come for Tampa Bay? I would be pissed off. You know, that's crazy. I feel like they should have respected if they knew about it before, like, um, you know, the, the, the state, if they knew about this Indian burial ground before, they should have made it sacred, whereas though it could not be disturbed. But I guess because the Native Americans made it, they, they looked at it as rubbish, which is so wrong, which is so wrong with so many levels. But you can't, you can't stop the way people think. But the homeowner did say he would put it back. Hopefully, it don't rumble up no feathers in his home. You know, them Indian burial grounds, they ain't no joke, baby. They ain't no joke. They hold powerful spirits. We want to see what happens. And even this sister right here, she's, you know, conveying as much of the information that she knows. Those burial grounds have been there for a very long time, way longer than the 1921 or anything of that nature. But you see, her DNA was trying to wake her up and bring her awareness to her that indeed a lot of sacred ritual and effort and affection and high spiritual energy has been put into these, these creations into these grounds the the very souls of those who rest there protect those those you know that that ground and when that's disturbed i mean you know it's all bad and she's aware of it even deep within her code she knows that this is wrong you know like i said you're gonna hear the term native american and you know things of that nature now when you're in person with somebody you can correct them on that let them know you know hey just let them know the business but at the same time you know right now it's neither here nor there the damage has been done we know who we are we know who these people were we know that they're the original inhabitants the copper colored aborigines the american indians we know that our ancestors were disturbed and that they're moving. All right? Okay, let's keep on going. You guys, can we get into this lore about Hurricane Milton? No, seriously, it's juicy. Apparently, they dug up an Indian burial ground that has been pushing hurricanes that have tried to or have been projected to hit Tampa away for like years years all of the hurricanes have missed this specific area where the bodies are buried until now because somebody dug them up to build a driveway and then once they realized that they had dug up human remains they tried to put it back now I don't know if that was an accident but boy did you make a mess mm. Now, I know some people are probably like, oh, there's no way this can be true. But no, guys, like a hurricane of this magnitude is just really ironic to me. I'm praying for everyone in Florida. I want to say, please stay safe. But some of you guys literally have no other options. So God bless y'all. This is so crazy. Again, another one of our uh, American Indians letting y'all know that uh, y'all have made a mess, you know whoever that disturbed uh, these bones. And this wasn't just on this one person. I don't want you to feel like we're just attacking this one person. A lot of people are just going and conveying off of the information that they're going, that they know and that they're going off of. But again, like I showed you earlier from our Latin, our Latin Aborigine or our Latin uh, American Indian, uh, she let y'all know like, hey, this is um, this is something that has been going on out here for a long time, at least for a few hundred years, within the 1800s or within the uh, you know this this was a town that there was a town there before there was a, before there was a city there was a town that this tribe has lived and it was destroyed by the Spanish 
you know, and this goes, this is even past the 1800s, they, they were infiltrated, and they were just, it was destroyed, it was burned down, and then later on in the 1800s, that's when they had uh, started doing the real defiling, taking things out and making roads, taking the antiques, taking things for antiques, defiling the sacred ground, taking the bones and moving the bones out of their area, out of their home to another part of the land, which is the major, the utmost disrespect. You know what I'm saying? So things been going on for a while. And um, like I said, atonement, atonement was made. And again, my, my heart goes out to those who were in the way. who were devastated by this that did not deserve to be. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, wrap it up with this last clip here. What do you get when you build a predominantly white community in Tampa, Florida on top of an Indian burial ground? And then you add to it a blessing from the tribe to try to uh, soothe and appease those spirits. And then you decide to add a little bit of gentrification. And in the process of doing that, you dig up those graves. You just toss those, those bones aside. You know what you get? You get a Category 5 hurricane. And when that hurricane doesn't wipe everything out, you get another one within days. And because your governor is not only racist, but an idiot, all of the insurance companies refuse to insure the people who live in that Tampa area. So they can't rebuild those houses that never should have been built on that Indian burial ground in the first place. What did we learn? All right, y'all. So there you have it. Like I said, that was Anichi's sister right there. And she, she knew exactly what was going on. She broke it down for you. I mean, what other words can be said after that other than... Like I said, my heart goes out to those who were affected, to all the Niji in particular who were affected by this. Those who are sitting out there without any power. Those who are looking for their significant others, for their cherished ones out there. Those who don't, you know, who can't get a hold of, of their cherished ones and stuff that's out there. And, you know, those whose lives was lost. I mean, it's, it's devastating, you know. Will this be the end? I don't know, you know, is there more to come? Who knows? I mean, we just in the thick of hurricane season right now and the ancestors, like I said, are moving. Everybody knows the Nijis and the foreigners, the others, everybody know what's going on, what's happening. They know that this ain't right, but I just wanted to shed some light and give you all another perspective on what's really going down out here. And um, just so y'all can have y'all own introspect and um really really decipher for yourselves how to really deal with the situation i know emotions are high i know that um yeah emotions are high you know what i mean so again my heart goes out to all those i was devastated particularly our Nijis out there in the southeast um from georgia all the way up from Georgia to Florida, you know, all the way up to um, Virginia and D.C. area. I mean, everybody that's gotten a lot of water that, you know, on, on that was on lower ground and those who are, are repairing as we speak and, and trying to trying to find a way to uh, trying to find a way to adjust. Because like the sister said, a lot of people out there, their insurance refused to cover them. And can't they can't get their houses rebuilt. A lot of these people sitting out here 
with no home now, homeless, you know, trying to figure out what's going to be their next move. A lot of a lot of our Nijis out here had armed babies, little babies, infants, you know what I'm saying? And, and my heart goes out to the mother that um, uh, the family rather of the mother and her two infant twins um, who were lost during Hurricane Helene. I had heard about that. That was that was very devastating. I had uh, reposted that on my Twitter. But um, yeah, I mean, this is no laughing matter. Yeah, the sun downtowns got what they, you know, what, what was coming to them. And even then, you got people out there that, you know, probably had nothing to do with nothing. And just living in a town that, you know, hey, but the bottom line is atonement was made and things are just moving the way that they're moving. Call it climate change, but we all know what it is, right? So, again, can't even say it enough. My heart goes out to those who um, who didn't, who, who, you know, my heart goes out to them. But, um, yeah. The ancestors are moving. So y'all going to move. Y'all either going to move with them or move out the way. With that being said, this is Chief Steve signing off. Tata Kista, I cherish y'all. My niggas out there, y'all be safe. Y'all stay, stay warm. Stay dry. And um, the storm shall pass. All right. Tatakista and Yokoki. Thank you. See you next time.